Let's do some news. My name is Mike B. This is the news on August 21st, 2019. A Wednesday. A Wednesday. I am joined today by my co-hosts, Chat, my uncles and aunties, and of course, Donut. There's a good boy. Good boy, Donut. There you go. Just gonna go. Oh, you just a little boy. You just squeeze, just squeeze, just squeeze. Jesus, okay, he's passed out. Uh, so, we have a number of things to talk about today, spanning back uh, a whole 10 days. We didn't have a news episode last week, um, where we would normally cover things that happened last week. Uh, so we have a couple things that happened over the course of two weekends. Uh, and I think both of those weekends were, uh, I would say the news is pretty much led by Twitch. <laughs> Twitch, Twitch is just, <laughs> Twitch, Twitch is just, I don't know, man, their, their, their weekend, their weekend to Monday, like crew, like is just, just really delivering, delivering all the, all the goods, um, with content that should definitely not be streamed on Twitch with the first one being. And I can't even really show you much from this because it was straight up porn. Straight up porn was streamed uh, with like, how, did anybody catch how many thousands of people were watching? It was a considerable amount of people and it was up for hours. Uh, something like five, five hours or so. This happened on August 11th, I believe. Uh, and they, it was a 20,000 people. Yeah. Fuck me. Fuck. And it was, it wasn't like softcore. Like it was straight up porn. Uh, and it was basically a throwaway account that just, you know, fired up the stream, started streaming some, it is funny because the article, I think this article actually calls it bootleg porn. Um, and I, I was wondering, what the fuck is bootleg porn? <laughs> isn't like, isn't all porn right now like bootleg? Like if you take it and you like, like upload it or play it, restream it somewhere else, it's technically bootleg, right? I don't know. Um, but yeah, so it was, uh, it was some hardcore porn. Some folks were polite enough to go and point out which, uh, which episodes specifically that they were airing. Uh, because if you were trying to do your whole, like, ask Siri, hey, what porn is this? She could never fucking figure this shit out. It's really, really shitty. Uh, but unfortunately for, you're probably wondering, why is, why is, uh, Tyler Bevins involved in all this? Why is Ninja involved in all this? Because remember, we talked about how, uh, how when Ninja left, Twitch took Ninja's page, which is probably... Probably, arguably, one of the most trafficked pages on uh, on Twitch. It was showcasing the top Fortnite streamers. The guy who was streaming porn was in the uh, uh, in, in the Fortnite category. So, guess what gets gets promoted on Ninja's page? Surprise, Pikachu. Um, yeah. So, for a number of hours on twitch.tv slash ninja, a one-of-a-kind offline page, because, again, he's not coming back to the platform, so they converted his page into a, uh, oh, are you, you're, are you're, 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 the person you're looking for is another castle, uh, here are some other people who are streaming on the platform in the same categories that this person used to stream in, uh, and it was a way for them to kind of capitalize on the traffic that was going to that page instead of just, just making a dead-end page. Um, now... Tyler didn't say anything. Ninja didn't say anything about the uh, 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 about it at first, but after this incident, he did come out and he did call them out uh, and say, and we'll go ahead and actually pull this up here. As you guys know, I'm streaming on Mixer now. My team and I have made sure that the transition went incredibly smooth, super professional. We haven't said anything bad or negative about Twitch, obviously, because there really hadn't been any reason to. Over the last couple of days, there have been some things that have been going on that, you know, we let slide. They were kind of annoying little jabs, we felt like, but it didn't matter. He's talking about them reusing the page. Oh. But now, for those of you who don't know, if you go to twitch.tv slash ninja, they advertise other channels. They don't do this for anyone else that's offline, by the way. Just me. And there are also other streamers who have signed with other platforms. He's going to go on and describe to you everything I just described to you. And then he has some words to say. Just, just basically that he's not necessarily happy or pleased with the fact that they are... Uh, that they that they were hosting pornography on his channel. So he apologizes to folks, even though he is, he's not obligated whatsoever to apologize to anybody. And they were still using my channel. <laughs> um, they weren't hosting them or anything? What is this? Uh, do you think Ninja could sue because they are using his brand without his permission? Well, I am not a lawyer, but... Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's mad. And understandably so, because that is his brand. 
So there is uh, th there is a uh, uh, there's a part of the the user agreement or the partner agreement that says that they are allowed to use the brand. Um, they're allowed to use the brand for as long as laws apply. And that's the part that's basically just like, well, yeah, we, we're going to go ahead and use it just as long as we could legally use it. Which means that we don't really know how long they could legally use it for because it hasn't been challenged yet. So it can very well be challenged and it, the law could come in and say, yeah, you can use their brand never after they leave the platform. Um, he's not a partner anymore. So those laws don't apply. That would definitely not fly. That would, are you kidding me? That would definitely not fly. Uh, they removed him as partner. And the fact that they removed him as partner uh, also would mean that they should also relinquish control of his brand. Now they have used his brand before for ben for, for their own benefit. Remember they, uh, uh, they had the advertising for the new, the new year's Eve party last year. Uh, and so they, they used his brand willingly across the platform, um, to promote that everybody hated it. Um, but is the page his? I doubt it. See, that's the thing. It's like it's like it, the 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 actual article, the actual terms, uh, the partner agreement says says that as long as laws apply, or basically as long as the law will allow, it doesn't give any specific date or time or limit or anything like that. Which, and to me, just basically translates to yeah, we could go ahead and challenge this and see what that number actually is. Uh, the other fact that their terms don't state when it ends and they have no way for someone to delete their own stuff and opt out could bite them in the butt there. Exactly. Uh, we know for a fact that Ninja did not uh, authorize specifically that that page be used for anything. Um, and that is his brand. And when pornography is streamed, is streamed uh, on his brand, that is damaging to his brand. So he has a case. I mean, I'm not a lawyer again, but uh, it sounds to me like he has a case to at least challenge. But does does uh, does Tyler Bevins have enough money to go against Amazon? <laughs> he seemed OK with it, even though everyone hated it because it got him out there more. Uh, but now when Twitch does it after he leaves, suddenly it's no longer OK. So just just so you guys know, I'm not associating this incident with anything that Ninja did in the past because I do not feel like that applies. I don't feel like because he streamed or because his his channel was advertised on other channels that he deserves what happened to him now. I don't feel like these are any in any way related whatsoever. This was his brand that had uh for for a limited time pornography associated with it to anybody who would go and land on that page. Um and so yeah, so I don't associate so what like yeah, I I didn't like it either that yeah, it was his his uh, his brand was being you know pimped all over the place on everybody's page for the New Year's Eve party thing. I don't like it, but I don't. I still don't associate these two things uh, at all, at all. Um, Ninja is pretty generic. They could give the page to any other user called Ninja. They could. That would be a that would <laughs> that would be a huge waste of that brand though. Uh, and that's a thing too is that they see that there's value in the page, right? Which is why they change that's just that page. Uh, to, uh, uh, to, to, to promote other channels because they see the value in that page. If you look at the page now, it's gone. I'm almost afraid to pull it up. Some pornography here. Um, but yeah, no, if you look at it now, like it's gone. Like there, there's no, uh, that whole custom page thing is, is, is done. It says mixer.com slash ninja at the bottom there. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Um, so they do, I mean, Twitch has, has gone through the motions to show that they do find value in his page. So... I don't feel like they're going to give that to anybody ever. They like that ever. I don't think this name is ever going to be released. This is like a retired Jersey number. That's, that's, that's essentially what this is. You're never going to see this name given to anybody else. Um, the overall problem is that Twitch told everyone via Twitter to hold them accountable for their actions and which doesn't help them right now. Oh dude. Yeah. No, that like the whole, like holds Twitch accountable for the actions thing. That was just talk. And I hate to say that. I really hate to say that because, again, I love Twitch, but I haven't seen anything that I haven't seen any instance where the community held them accountable and they followed through with it. Uh, I mean, general moderation, like, yeah, they took down the they took down the, the pornography off uh, off Twitch. It's like that's not something that we necessarily hold them accountable for in terms of taking it down. The speed at which they get it taken down is or just the fact that they even allow it to even exist for any period of time uh that's what we should hold them accountable for unfortunately just the next fucking weekend 
they basically made the same mistake again. I don't know if you guys are tuned in. This is this picture right here is pretty much the only thing I can show you from this feed that I feel safe to show. Um, I think the point is that he didn't ever say anything about except for to encourage when Twitch pimped him out. But now Twitch is using his page to pimp out other people, and he's angry about it. Yeah, I still don't think it applies. I still don't think it applies. Uh, you know, we're talking about Amazon versus a singular person. Uh, but yeah, so this this was up for a number of hours. This stream was hot. Uh, so I'm at a friend's house, and I uh, uh, and it was was it even that late? I don't even think it was that late. It was like eleven or twelve o'clock or something like that on Saturday, and. <clears throat> And we're going through the uh, the just chatting section. And what you do, here's what you do. You basically scroll down to the bottom of the just chatting section and you usually find something like this. You usually, you usually find something like this uh, or, or you find loads of channels. You know, people talk about like, you know, titty streamers and all that stuff. Like it's really hard to make an argument that that's not a thing when you when you decide on like a Saturday night to go down and kind of scroll through just chatting. It's really hard to say that. Oh, that's not really a thing, um, because it is a thing. Uh, and so I said there's was four four different Twitch channels associated. Yeah, there was four different sh Twitch channels. The one that was uh, that got the majority of the follower or the majority of the actual uh, um, attention was the Sue uh, Sue Flower. Now they, so here's what happened. Uh, the channel came up, it started streaming and they kind of just stood around for a little bit. I couldn't, we couldn't really tell at first if they were actually interacting with chat, but then they, um, uh, but then they started responding to, to, uh, uh, to people leaving comments in like, you know, new subs or follows or whatever. And people would leave like a comment or something, uh, or like, or donations. And so that's what, okay, they're, they're, they're actually, they're not just standing around like they, they are actually participating. It's this actual interactive stream. So we started watching for a little bit. We figured we might as well go ahead and watch for a little bit. You know, I'm a heterosexual male. I, I see some sexy Korean, <laughs> Korean ladies. I'm going to probably watch. I'm probably going to watch. Okay. Uh, and so we, uh, uh, we, we, we stuck around. We watched for a little bit. Uh, and then they changed cameras. They had like four cameras and they were like quality cameras too. They were like some quality cameras. Uh, and so we were like totally intrigued. This was the thing. And then within like 15 minutes uh, or so, within like 15 minutes of the start of the video, they start playing some music and then they start like taking off the clothes. And those of you guys who saw, I wonder if I could find that. Uh, uh, <laughs> me and my friend, an actual hyena, uh, <laughs> we, were, we were just fucking dying. Just dying. Hold on. Um, let me pause this here. Yeah. Oh, I can't play it for you. I can't because it's got actual video of the content. Oh, I can't even fucking play it for you. Let me go play the audio. How many people are watching this right now? And they're, and you can't Dude, see, what the fuck? but they're this actually stripping to music. I can't show you again, but they're actually stripping the music. Um, kind of almost just like, Hey, look at this thing. Um, and so, yeah, it was, it was just, it was a thing and it fuck, it fucking blew up by, by morning. It had something like 20, uh, 29,000 was the, was the registered peak. Some people say that they saw over 30,000, uh, but the registered peak was 29 point something thousand. Uh, so, so more than, than what the hardcore porn stream got actually. Um, and in the actual chat itself, obviously as time went on more and more folks, were uh, English speaking folks were trying to participate in chat and the moderators were telling people, Hey, English only, please they just English or sorry, please Korean only, uh, trying to curb some of it. And I mean, some of the comments, like they, they, it was like some people were leaving comments in the, uh, in the donations, uh, inappropriate, of course. And unfortunately, like, you know, well, I'm sorry, fortunately they weren't able to, they, they weren't able to read what it was, <laughs> but, um, but anyways, they, they carried on like it was just a regular stream. Like it was like, this was just planned content. And this was like, again, this is very high production. Um, so I can't, I can't imagine that it wasn't some kind of pre-planned event that they had planned to do this. And the Westerners ruined it. Like culturally a stream like this is actually totally fine in South Korea. But when the Puritan Westerners get involved, they're the ones that take issue with it. 
and then Twitch gets involved and they do something about it. Uh, the stream was up for uh, it said it says it says it was banned within hours. It should be updated. This should have title should actually say banned within hours after they were done streaming because they did actually do five and a half hours of stream. Uh, and then they, uh, and then after they were offline, they posted pictures to their Instagrams and may have followed them, uh, and, uh, saying, oh, what a great stream. Thanks for coming out and all this stuff. Like they, they made it all the way through the end. And then, uh, within hours of afterwards, they ban all the models that were associated with this. Uh, and guess what? They're all back. <laughs> They're all back. Uh, if we go to, let's go to Twitch, let's go to twitch.tv and see. So. So one of them is back here. Actually, all of them are back. If you check all the other ones, um, uh, why don't we check? I only check three of them. I, I, one of them I didn't, I didn't pull their name. I just said fuck it. Uh, but uh, this was the channel that I was actually being streamed on. If you go to if you go to clips, you can see that there are still clips that exist from the uh, previous stream. So that wasn't removed at all. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, the vod itself is gone, but the the clips still exist. And I guess I guess they only got you know a, a handful of. Uh, uh, a handful of days banning <laughs> or ban which feels inconsistent given what the kind of content they were doing it feels like that but at the same time i re i really am i really am leaning on that this is seriously just a cultural difference this is the uh this is an acceptable type of content for people in south korea and it's the white man that ruined it for everybody uh, like, was there any nudity? I feel like there's overreaction. There was no nudity. There was no nudity, cashier. But it was, uh, but it was, it was inappropriate. I think for uh for Twitch. Yeah, I just it's because like it was it was it even a mature. I don't, I don't actually know if it was a mature stream. Uh, I have no idea if it was a mature stream because we were watching on the TV and the TV doesn't really uh doesn't really do it. <laughs> don't love all of us white men into the U.S. <laughs> hey, you'd be surprised at just how uptight. Europeans are as well, all right? Come on. Uh, but no, it's mostly the U.S. <laughs> was it Taga? Because they were just chatting. They were just chatting. They were interacting. Uh, and and yeah, there was uh, there, there's rules about underwear. And she, yes, yes, there is. There is rules about, uh, and, and not to mention, too, the type of, it wasn't just what they were wearing or that maybe this content was not necessarily that appropriate until, until they started pressing their breasts up against the windows. There was like glass on the, like there was like a pool, right? And they got in the pool and then they had the camera on the other side so you could see through this giant glass, like look into the pool and they were expressing their, their, they're pressing their titties up against the window. And one girl actually took the other one and kind of pushed a little bit harder. It's like, hey, you gotta really squeeze them. You gotta really squeeze them to get them up there. There you go. Uh, so yeah, it was, you know, it was a, um, there was plenty of actual moments that did not belong on Twitch. So, uh, yeah, at first it started out, it was kind of like, okay, so we got some, you know, four attractive women on stream, not a problem at all. But when you start taking off your clothes and pressing your titties up against the glass, that's when I think it crosses the line. Maybe. At least it should. Uh, they're all broadcast jockeys, and yeah, there'd be a lot of back backlash from the South Korean community for banning them. Uh, these were considered to be, um, uh, you see the throwing around that they are uh, supermodels, Korean supermodels, and some folks are, are looking at their follower counts. Uh, and saying, what are you talking about? They're not supermodels or whatever. Uh, there's also a, the numbers, like, like if you look at somebody who is, uh, like us based or EU based and you look at like their social media numbers and you think, Oh, somebody is, a, is, is a, is a model, right? Like a supermodel on Instagram. You're thinking like millions of followers, right? Or at least like 500,000 followers or something like that. Right. Where, um, where in South Korea, uh, and, and, and other countries as well, because the, the population is, is not quite as far reaching, right? It's like the, there's a language barrier there. Uh, for them, a supermodel can very easily be in the, you know, between 10 and 50,000, uh, followers, uh, easily. So, so, so you're going to hear about, well, you may not hear about it anymore because they're back and they'll be fine. But, but, but if you're wondering, they did say on their Instagram that they do plan a return stream, uh, in like five days or like a week or something like that. And that was on... Uh, I want to say Monday they said that. So they will be live again, uh, probably this coming weekend. So uh, I'm looking forward to their return stream and seeing how they go. But if you guys want to see the numbers, uh, we have Twitch tracker here. We can actually pull that up. And we can see just how, how much of an impact it makes when you make a stream like this. Uh, you can see that in the latest here, the, uh, you can see 29,000 
most viewers, right? 29,000. Their previous stream was 453. She averaged between 300 and 500. And then on this one, she got, uh, uh, or she peaked at that. And then this one, she got 29,000. Uh, let's see. Uh, most viewers, again, it, it, by a long shot. Uh, most followers, <laughs> just, just so many. Um, we could even see down here the uh, uh, the average viewers. Well, that actually that number is going to get skewed, but uh, uh, but you could see that it peaks towards the end here because because of the stream. Um, and yeah, I mean, was there anything else we could filter by? Not really. That's pretty much all the stuff here. Uh, Twitch's rules are super ambiguous and people complain when Twitch doesn't enforce. Mixer's rules are written out clearly. People complain it is sexist. I know, I know. They they, they say that, oh, don't tell me how to how to dress or whatever. It's like, no, how about we will tell you how to dress? <laughs> so that way you don't fucking dress in something stupid. Um, uh, that is all because the Ninja community found a way to exploit the system on Ninja's channel. What? Wait, what? Uh, is it true that even those girls will be streaming classic? Maybe. Wait, hold on a sec. What, are they, what does they play? Uh, let's see. Dead Cells. Let me see. Most unique views, longest. See Mario Maker. Uh, this is why do we wait to see what game? I'm curious. I'm cur I am curious what games uh, this person plays. Well, obviously, just chatting is going to be the greater, greater. Oh, that's airtime actually. So yeah, mostly just chatting. A little bit of Mario Maker, some Dungreed, uh, Dun Dun Greed. See a Dance of Fire and Ice and Super Mario Odyssey, and then other 27 games. So for the most part, and you can see them right here as well. Um, it looks like it's mostly just just chatting and one nut. But, oh shit, can you guys actually see it? <laughs> did I did I have this up? I don't think I had this up this whole time. Uh, so did I show you guys this? I don't even know. Um, geez, gotta look at the preview window more often. Uh, nope, okay, well here you go. So 29,000 viewers here. Uh, 29,000 versus the rest of their time here. You can see basically nothing uh, compared to what they did on that day. And here's the thing, like, there's, this is a lot, this is a lot that they, uh, that they have gained in doing this. Now you don't need to see it. Uh, was so terrible. I know, so terrible. Where's my producers at? Should have said something. Um, you know, they, 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 they went out and they did this thing and they got tons of traction and tons of viewers and tons of, of followers and tons of, of tips and, and just all kinds of stuff. And then, and then they, uh, uh they get banned for what looks like two and a half days. Uh, and then they're going to come back and just reap the rewards of this. And this is not, this is not a them thing. Like this is not, this is not something specific for them. This happens to everybody. This is like everybody that gets big enough where they could do something stupid and just take a short, yeah, just take a short ban and then come back afterwards stronger. It's, it's just, they're just working the system. There, there's definitely people who are thinking about things that they could do that is against the rules, but not quite, like, it won't, won't be a permanent ban, but it'll definitely get you a temporary ban. Uh, and it's worth just catching. It's like, hey, if, you, if you're going to be gone, if you're going to be on vacation or something for like a week, um, just do something kind of silly and get lots of track, get all, get all that, uh, that LSF traffic. Uh, if they weren't before, they should now. I mean, yeah, if they weren't before after Doc, yeah, Doc definitely, yeah, Doc is out like three times. <laughs> Yeah, Doc, Doc has done it a few times now. Uh, yeah, just get banned and then come back. I think Trainwrecks has done it too. Just get banned and then come back. Yeah, Asmongold, did Asmongold never get banned for anything? Um, but, uh, but yeah, just do it and then come back. Seems kind of risky. It does seem kind of risky. Meanwhile, Linity, invincible. <laughs> uh, invincible, yeah. Well, don't, well, remember, remember, the, uh, uh, People looked into that. Uh, officials looked into that, like uh, the local PETA or something like that, and said that. Well, not the local PETA, the local something. Of, and then they uh, they said that it was fine. So I was like, okay. Um, uh, well, why are you not aware that Ninja's channel stream was featuring other channels before the incident? Because we are not members of his channel. Which what happens is his community found out how the new channel operates, and they pile on those streams to get to the top. Why was I not aware? I covered it on the news. Why aren't you watching the news? Talk to me like that. The fuck you think you are? Uh, but yeah, no, people saw that you could very easily milk, uh, you know, pile on or bought a channel and then um, get it to the top. Absolutely. Absolutely. Totally. Uh, we just misunderstand her. She's trying to cash in on this method and Twitch won't let her. Oh, that's true, huh? Yeah, Guns. Maybe she is. Maybe she is trying to uh, get, uh, get a temporary ban. She just can't, just can't fucking do it. She keeps throwing animals and she just can't fucking do it. <laughs> it just doesn't work that way, I guess. Uh, let's see. Next up, somebody showed me a clip of another ASMR streamer that said the N word clear as day and nothing happened. But did they whisper it? That's the point, isn't it? 
Uh, let's see, next up. Some of you guys play uh, Apex Legends? Maybe. Maybe. Seems the kind of thing that would only be worth it if you're planning on switching streaming service. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, next up. Don't, t oh my god. Let me open this up in a new window here because it's it's literally popping up my my personal email accounts here, trying to get me to sign in. Let me make sure it doesn't sign. Trying to sign me in. Okay, good, good. No pop ups. No pop ups. Okay, good. Sorry. Um. So, Apex, yeah, Apex devs, some mad lads. Two of them specifically. Uh. So over over the past was a, over the weekend, I think. Um. We had, uh, right before the weekend. So first off, there was a new update that introduces some new loot. Uh, people were not necessarily, uh, pleased with the way that they handled the loot boxes or the way that you acquire some of these new items. Uh, and so they, they went out and they changed it so that way you can purchase some items direct instead of having to go through the loot, uh, loot crates in order to get it. And they took to Reddit to kind of field some of the criticism and also answer some questions from people who are genuinely concerned and just try to, like, to really help, like kind of help the situation. And they did not help. <laughs> they did not help at all. Um, they uh, they actually made it uh, just, just infinitely worse. So uh, the lead community, the, the, the lead producer uh, for our project lead for, uh, for uh, a respawn and a respawn community manager just started getting really shitty with a couple of people. And, and the thing is, uh, I understand why they were getting uh, a little shitty with folks because they deal with a lot of stuff. But you just don't say that shit, especially if you're a community manager. It just does not look good. If you're a community manager, it doesn't matter if your lead producer or whatever, uh, your project lead is in here just running amok and just talking shit. You don't back them up on it. You know, you're not, you, don't, you don't go out and be like, yeah, yeah, you guys are dicks. Uh, so they did have some things to say. I'll go read some out for you. So, hey, everyone found the dick I was talking about. Guess what? Didn't read your comment except for the first sentence and last. That's, this kind of garbage doesn't warrant a reply. But lucky for you, I already made a comment about this earlier. Go find it. That was the, uh, uh, the lead project lead. Uh, I've been in industry long enough to remember that when, play when players weren't complete asshats to developers, and it was pretty neat. I forged a bunch of long-lasting relationships back then. Would be awesome to get back there and not engage it with toxic people asking how high when a mob screams jumps. Uh, streams jump is hopefully a start just things you don't really want to say uh there is a wealth of data available on how monetization works in free-to-play games and we ourselves have run tests putting skins on sale in the store the amount of people who spend is crazy low most of y'all are freeloaders and we love that and change and a change in price doesn't move the needle if we didn't say free name call people freeloaders this would have been fine this this actually would have totally fine <laughs> <laughs> Didn't Ghostcrawler make his name by shitting on people in forums? Uh, I don't know, actually. I actually don't know. Uh, devs not taking people's shit is kind of endearing. Yes, so that's the thing. It is kind of endearing that when a dev doesn't take people's shit, like, but the action, but but a community manager should never do it. A community manager should absolutely never do it. Um, they're literally hired to manage the community, and you don't manage a community by calling them dicks. Sorry, Josh. Uh, so you, you have to, you absolutely have to, uh, uh, take the high, take the high road every single time. That's part of your fucking job. Now developers, developers will, you know, I mean, sometimes we gotta give them a pass cause they're, they're literally not hired for, um, oh, that does say, yeah, oh, yeah, that's what's wrong. Uh, developers are not hired for how well they interact with the community. They're hired for, for the work that they do behind the scenes. Unfortunately, when you let one out of its cage, apparently, <laughs> this could happen. Uh, it said, uh, what I read was, whales don't buy enough Apex packs to make up for everyone else uh, not buying, so we have to do something to get pretend goodwill from players. You should work on your reading comprehension. So, it's a northern thing. The, the, the apostrophe in, the, in the, the middle of the thing. Okay, cool. Um, so, yeah. I, so, personally, I think Jay Fresh probably should you know, look for... Other other career opportunities, maybe within maybe within respawn, it's fine. But uh, if this is if this is this person's style of community management, I don't feel like it's really gonna it's not really gonna pan out very well for them uh, for this person at all. Uh, I mean, the whole free game thing doesn't get a pass though. They price this horribly, and there is no excuse. As much as we dislike Epic, look at Fortnite. The things at, uh, uh, the things in it are priced correctly, and they make all the money. Yes. So uh, 
they have initially people did the math and it was like hundreds of dollars that you'd had to spend on loot crates in order to get these items that you want. Uh, and if you've ever played Apex, you know that there's a, they have like these three, uh, like three or six day rotation of loot. And some of this, and in order to get a specific item, uh, there was like one specific item that, that you could only get by collecting all the other items as well. And that would require you like checking in on every refresh. And it was a nine day program and it was like three to six days for the overlap for the loot loot refresh. And so it was just like, it was all this fucking convoluted shit in order to get gear when they should have just put it for sale. Just put it for sale. This is what, this is what's happening with like, people are really getting fucking fed up with this, uh, uh, with loot boxes. They're just, they're just, they're just fucking done. And this is the kind of shit that's going to spawn from it. This all this 100% spawn because they were trying to uh, use the, uh, trying to milk the loot box system for some new items. And they made it just super fucking convoluted with collecting this to unlock this and all that stuff. Uh, it's fine if those skins you were getting were any good, but Apex skins are crap. That's not, it's irrelevant. Uh, uh, this is seriously just making me think of pretty close to the same stuff. Eve with Monocle Gate as well as other games. Yeah, so think of, think of Monocle Gate but not quite as expensive, uh, but you have to collect other things first. And there's not really a chance, there, there's, only, there's only a chance that you might collect the things that you need in order to get that final item. Uh, but, but regardless, it was, um, it's just not, it all comes down to just, they're trying to milk uh, loot crates and it bit them in the ass in the long run. <laughs> if, they, if they just put the shit up for sale, none of this would have happened. None of this would have happened, Jesus. Uh, it's not completely irrelevant, that's mostly what the community hates. $20 for a really shitty skin. Oh, well, in that case, you could just not buy it. But the, the, the actual, uh, that's not the argument. It's not that they're shitty skins for that price. The, the argument was that it took so much money using the loot rotation and the, um, just the chance of getting things in order to just unlock and get a, yes, that might've been a part of the conversation, but the majority of it was the fact that it was just so convoluted for ultimately something that was not necessarily that good. Um, but yeah, I mean, they could just just put the shits up for sale, man. Just put the shit up for sale. It's it's so much easier. So obviously there was a little bit of fallout from this, and uh, 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 Vince Zampanella, who's CEO of Respawn, responds, and he says, "On Friday, we gave Apex fans an update on how we were changing the Iron Crown event. Some of the team joined in a, joined a discussion with our community on Reddit, and things got a, got to a pretty bad place. Some of our folks crossed the line with their comments, and that's not how we want Respawn to be represented." Uh, represented. Uh, I apologize to any of our fans that were offended. I will always stand behind the team here at Respawn and support them on speaking out against some of the toxic and nasty comments being directed at them, including everything from death threats to comments aimed at their family and loved ones. But we shouldn't contribute to it when we do comments and add, and, and add to the very thing that we want to prevent. Uh, we need to lead by example. Last week, we didn't do that. And going forward, we will be better. Having an open, healthy relationship with our community is incredibly important to all of us at, uh, at uh, Respawn. So yeah, it's uh, uh you, you got to squeeze in. You can't just apologize. You have to just also have to make sure you remind everybody that these guys do get death threats. They absolutely do get death threats from just like random fucking people because it's the internet and it's big enough that you will absolutely get a death threat for basically whatever you want, whatever you, whatever you're planning on doing. Someone's gonna say, "I'll kill you if you do that." It's the fucking internet, um, and we can't stop it because there's just no way to fucking stop it. Uh, this don't like it, don't buy it thing is bullshit. These companies do this shit to prey on people with gambling addictions, poor impulse control, and who are young and not knowledgeable. Selling random gambling like this is bad, and they should feel bad. Uh, I, I agree. It definitely uh, does not help the whole gambling thing when you put all these time limitations on rotating loot and all that stuff. Like, it definitely does not help uh, at all. Uh, at least they... But, but what I will say, Dark, uh, is I do think it's bullshit, but at the same time, if nobody buys it, then they'll have to find other means of, of doing it. Uh, and I mean, he does, he does say that whales, what does he say? Uh, he says the amount of people who spend is crazy low. Most of y'all are freeloaders. So the, really what he's saying, that's person translated was that, um, that there obviously are a number of whales who will just buy, you know, whatever and collect everything apex has to offer for whatever reason that might be. Um, at least they uh, messed up. They admitted, uh, uh, they messed up being jerks. At least they admitted they messed up being jerks on like a certain developer studio. Sorry, when chat moves, it's hard to read. Um, slow down. Uh, it's funny because Titanfall 2 did it in the complete opposite fashion where premium skins and executions were a flat dollar price. Can I send you a, a death threat? I just want to practice. No, please don't. <laughs> 
I tr I trust I trust that you uh, uh that, that that everybody is capable of doing so. Um, uh, if you do say a death threat on the internet for anything at all, but especially a video game, then you're the bad guy, just so you know. But yeah, Apex is still messed up. They're playing this in the first place, and then in their response. That's right. Um, yeah, they fucked up. They pretty much, they pretty much fucked up. Um, if I have to grind that much for some of these games, these has better be giving me some kind of combat advantage instead of the shitty, it's just cosmetic. Not sure if I agree with all that. Uh, I spent a few hundred dollars buying things directly in BDO. Same in Marvel Heroes. I've never bought a loot crate though. Uh, yeah, I bought a t I bought a ton of stuff in Warframe, but if Warframe had like I don't know Warframe blueprint loot boxes, which I don't know if it has it now, but it didn't have it when I was playing. Where like you could just like spend money and then get oh okay now I'm gonna get a, a box that's gonna have. Remember they had the mod packs. Like, I never bought the mod pack. I bought, like, maybe once or twice. But, like, those are mostly junk. Um, God, I just couldn't, yeah, I just, I just couldn't hang with that. But, yeah, if, if there's, like, blueprints in there or something, or, I guess, skins or whatever, like, I don't know. I just wouldn't really go into that. But I, I, bought, I bought directly a ton of shit. Uh, I spent $750 on Warframe, $5 on POE, and never bought a loot crate. Yeah. I don't even want to tell you guys how much money I spent on Warframe. I don't want to say it on this stream. My wife might be upset with me. Uh, you used to try to be a better person. Death threats are never okay, but in the age where we are in, it shows it is going. It, yeah, it's, it shows it's going to happen. The best thing we could do is take proper avenues and be the bigger person and stay connected to the community and fans. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Perfect color palettes. But they were not randomized though. Um, all right. So next, next up, next up. God, where do we go next from here? We started a little bit late, so I'm kind of worried about the time. So I'm kind of like looking at it, like, gosh, we just talking about the next thing, the next thing. Uh, how about this? How about some not so good news? Everything else we've talked about today has been great news. Are you kidding me? I, 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 you guys already know what you guys are going to be doing this weekend. Sue Flower is going to be streaming. You guys are going to be there. See? It's been mostly good news overall. Let me see. Oof. Oof. Shit. Um, Jesus. Uh. GameStop, we talked about GameStop last week, the week before, they, uh, they laid off all of their district, uh, their district managers, or regional managers, they had a name for them, um, and, or district leaders, regional leaders, I don't know. Anyways, they, they laid off about 50 people, and they discussed that they had plans uh, to further, to basically further find areas, uh, areas of opportunity to save money across the business. And they found another area of opportunity which was to lay off an additional 120 people, amounting to 14% of their total staff. Uh, and uh, for those of you guys who watch Game Informer, uh, they laid off a handful of people from there that amounted to, it was like seven people they laid off from Game Informer, former, which actually amounted to about half of their total um, staff. So when I, when I first heard that they were, they laid off some folks, and I saw the number of like 100 and something, and people were like, saying, oh, yeah, it's a Game Informer. I was like, wow, there's 120 fucking people working at Game Informer? Like, yeah, <laughs> like, you've got to let them go, man. Like, this is, this is not going to happen. But then when I heard that it was like 14 people or something, like seven, like seven people were laid off, and that was like half of the staff on, on Game Informer, that seemed like a low number. So I have actually, oh, it says, uh, prior to today, Game Informer employed 19 people on its masthead. I thought there'd be more people than that. That's crazy, uh, but I guess that makes kind of sense. I mean, Game Informer just seems so much bigger than 19 people. Uh, I was surprised they waited this long to cut Game Informer stuff. Yeah, I mean, maybe they've been like letting people go just like a little bit at a time, and then they decided to uh, to just finally just you know come in and, and really cut ties with a lot of folks. But uh, but yeah, there's 120 people that have been laid off. I don't know how this uh, how this translates into individual stores even in the article here it says uh it says across its headquarters various offices and the publication um gamestop doesn't sell good old game systems or games oh i hate to see people lose their jobs but there's a great there uh, there's a great market for old systems and game that gamestop doesn't touch yeah i went to a i went to a game store a retro game store this weekend called uh like game dude or something uh, and it was in it wasn't in Sherman Oaks, but it was in like Van Nuys. I think maybe in Van Nuys. Um, it it was a very impressive store. It, it was huge. It was absolutely huge. And uh, apparently they shot a bunch of videos. So if you watch like Angry Video Game Nerd did a did a, a video there, um, and a couple other folks like YouTubers have done a bunch of videos there. Uh, but it's it's a significant collection of retro video games, like a lot. 
I actually went through their NES collection, of course, and it was very hard not to buy stuff. Um, and they had just like everything, like every game I could think of that I had growing up, they had. And it was, again, very difficult not to just go and just buy that shit. Um, they also had a bunch of imports. And that's the, that was the thing that really caught my eye because uh, I, I don't know how easy it is to get import game now, but I know that it was impossible, you know, 20 years ago to get like an import copy of, you know, like let's say Mario Lost Levels or something uh, until that came out re -re as a re-release. Um, but yeah, like there's like Japanese imports are were were like a huge deal. Uh, yeah, and with eBay it's a little bit easier now for sure. Uh, I don't know what those prices look like, but I mean just having it right there in front of you really aids with the whole like you know impulse buy thing. Uh, but GameStop just doesn't do that. GameStop is kind of like they're trying to be like the swap meet of used games, but at the same time they're also trying to be like a video game version of uh of of Hot Topic or something. Um, or what is that one that Sam, the Sam's? Uh, what the fuck is it? The fucking gift store. You go in and stuff, but it's like it's like uh, uh, lava lamps and sex toys, but it's in the mall. Spencer's. See, <laughs> see, y'all know. <laughs> uh, yeah, Spencer's. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, they're basically trying to be like a video game version of Spencer's, and it just, it's just, it's just not a good mix in the world of ordering everything online. It's just not a good mix. But something like Game Dude or whatever that place is called, uh, that place does have a market it's not it's not a corporate owned anything uh they just have a shitload of inventory of used games uh and they probably just have people coming in that just drop hundreds of dollars on because they see something they grew up with and they're just like i have to have that i'm gonna buy an nes classic like an actual nes and then i'm gonna buy all the games that i had for it uh because it's all right here and so they probably make a lot of money on people that come in and just drop loads of cash to catch up on their childhood um, uh, lava lamps and sex toys also not a good mix. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, not really. Uh, just have to pay attention to which one you say. Whoa, uh, uh, uh GameStop started selling retro a year plus ago. They don't just they just don't get a ton, really. Well, for what I from what I've seen from GameStop, they their retro uh stock is typically like a handful of games in like a Ziploc baggie with a red tag. Uh, and there's usually not that many. Or they have a bunch of Xbox classic games, like a few here and there, but you don't really see, yeah, it's not, it's not like you get, uh, like a swap meet, swap meets are the best place to go and get retro games, um, like, I don't know what it's like now, but, uh, but usually you have, like, a rack, and they just, it's like the same rack they've been carrying around for, like, 20 years, and they're just trying to just, you eventually just, they'll sell through all of it, I guess, um, and you just kind of go through it, it's, it's just like, it's just like, of like cartridges. You know where you used to go through and look through CDs and shit, right? Or vinyl. The same thing but with like cartridges. It was fucking great. Fucking great. You pick it up, you can feel it in your hand uh, that hard plastic. Oh, so good. So good. Um rumor is that the market uh that's the market GameStop is gonna go after. Oh, that's the market that mark that they're gonna go after to save themselves, make retro stores, esports stores, etc. That'd be the way to do it. I mean, they have to choose though, right? I mean, like retro store or esports store. Those two things don't, they're not in the same category. And right now with what they're doing, they're trying, again, they're trying to be a swap meet of used video games and also be the Spencers of video games as well. Like, I, is it a good mix to have them all together? Retro esports. Oh, shit. <laughs> Here we go. Quick live. Um, but yeah, so. Ah. <sighs> Uh, oh, the, the link you posted earlier. Let me see. What did you post? You have an actual link from, um, uh, hold on. Boop. It's not that I don't trust you. Is that, uh, oh, here we go. What is this? It says, uh, the Super Mario also, it's Super Nintendo games. Oh, uh, $14.99, $9.99, $20. I mean, frankly, okay. Mario Kart 64. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mario Kart 64 that's a, that's a little that's a little a little high uh but go go try to buy Mario Party is it 8 I think go try to buy Mar buy Mario Party I think is 8 damn I was one of the Wii U I think I can't remember but anyways there's like two Mario Parties that are like always $50 like always and they will always be $50 if not more 
Uh, apparently, I think Mario Kart 64 is going to be the same thing. Mario Kart 64 was just all right. Wasn't that great? Uh, for a lot of popular SNES RPGs, for example, the U.S. version is more expensive than the Japanese version. Uh, I.e. like Chrono Trigger. There you go. So, the early Mario Party are uh, like 80, if you can find them. Jesus. Yeah, so GameStop lays off 120 people. Uh, just to add to the list of 50 that we that they laid off uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, so they're following through. They're following through with the whole, like, they're going to thin out and they're going to, you know, find ways to save money. Uh, we're, we're hearing about the layoffs, but we don't really know, like, infrastructure-wise, like, how they're, what they're doing to save money there. Uh, I, I don't want to go out and say, oh, they're just firing people when they could do blank, because we don't know what else they're doing behind the scenes. We know that they plan on coming up with a new... Uh, a new approach to selling games uh, and also clear out like a uh, clear out of a ton of uh, of used game inventory but we don't actually know what they're doing um behind the scenes well, they don't, we know that they have to do fucking something because otherwise uh well otherwise they're uh they're going to die <laughs> this, this something's going to happen to them uh let me see I guess speaking of bankruptcy <laughs> speaking of business not going so hot uh loot crate files for bankruptcy have any of you guys uh subscribed to loot crate is that a death threat <laughs> watch out GameStop. um used to i know i know a lot of people used to uh i never got into loot crate itself obviously i've been into indie box i was in indie box for as long as they were uh it's actually a thing um you got it for a few months six months worth of a couple years ago uh my brother used to he might still be into it uh but obviously not anymore. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they are. They file for bankruptcy and they lay off workers. But promises to ship remaining uh, remaining boxes. There's not really a whole lot else to tell here. Uh, this just might be a story that you guys may have missed if you don't follow Loot, Loot Crate anymore. And maybe you're thinking, huh? Maybe I go sign up and get, like Saren says, some cheap video game T-shirts. Uh, well, nope. <laughs> you're gonna have to find somewhere else uh you could probably go and pick up some of those uh i mean somebody actually pointed out that there was a shirt in what shirt was it well i can't remember what shirt it was but there was a shirt that was in a picture of a of a gamestop uh when we covered the gamestop story and it was a used shirt that somebody was like oh shit that came from loot crate so i mean yeah 70 percent of the stuff is trash and i think that's probably part of the problem is that you know, Loot Crate was, it was just part of a wave of everybody just getting that, like, nothing, like, are you uh, just total surprise, you don't know what you're getting, you just pay money and they send you stuff, right? Um, there are services now that will dress you, you just send them your measurements, and they will just send you clothes every month. So, if, for those of you guys who have, uh, you know, money to spend on clothes, but maybe you don't necessarily want to go clothes shopping... Uh, you can just go and sign up for various service that, services that will just literally send you clothes, like outfits, and you can try them on, and if you don't like something, you could send it back. Um, there, it's, it's taken, it's, there's basically a loot crate for essentially everything. There was like a loot crate for like, uh, board games too, I think, uh, for, for a minute there. It was like obscure board games and whatnot. Um, wife has done two different services for that. Yeah, see? Jen, Jen is basically her own service for that. Uh, Jen will just buy a bunch of stuff from Amazon and then try it all on and then just send like 90% of it back. So she, she, she does that herself. She just loot crates it. So she's like, oh shit, I forgot to order all these things. Seven articles of clothing. I'm just like, oh my God, it's a lot of stuff. And she's like, don't worry. I just want one. And she'll just try on, oh, this is it. And she'll send the rest back. Hmm. Uh, Mike got a first sponsor here. They send you uh, raises in the mail like every month. Oh God, it's right. Yeah. 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 See, there's, there's a loot crate for everything. Uh, there are actually some pretty good games that we got with that. With uh, oh, so you did you did get that? I, I missed that part. Uh, she, oh, it's the board game box too. Yeah, there you go. I knew I knew it existed. I can't remember what it was called. Uh, so you got some good stuff from it too, huh? I feel like there's a lot of value in that, especially if you're someone that plays a lot of board games. Like I feel like a loot crate box, a loot crate for uh, uh, for uh, board games would actually be beneficial for you because those things like last forever. It's not like a T-shirt you wear like once and then it's kind of, or maybe it doesn't fit or like a stupid poster. Like, you know, board games will take up a lot of space. You can go stick it somewhere and then uh, come back later and play if you want. Uh, I gave a lot of stuff from Loot Crate Away as gifts. There you go. Yeah, that's right. A lot of people did that. As a matter of fact, yeah, that's how I know that my brother used to sign up for Loot Crate because he sent me some fucking leftovers. <laughs> some of his leftover uh, uh, Loot Crate items. So, yeah. But unfortunately, yeah, not anymore. 
Not anymore. It's unfortunate, but uh, but I mean, every every trend has its dawn. Just like every cowboy sings a sad, sad song. Uh, let's see. Next up, uh, na 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 do 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 do. Jay Z, Jay Z, fuck, Jay Z. <laughs> Daisy has been uh, <laughs> Daisy. Day wow, it, it's 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 stuck in my brain now. Daisy, what? Jay Z standalone. Daisy uh, has been reapproved. I was actually going to cover this news uh, last week, but we didn't do a show. Uh, thank you, Oxygen Not Included, for ruining my life. Uh, we were going to do a show, and a part of that was going to be talking about how uh, <laughs> the ban on Jay Z. Uh, was uh, 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 was put in place because in in Daisy you you were able to use uh, certain controlled substances in order to refill health or something like that. There are certain things that just did not uh, jive well with the local government in Australia, um, and so they pulled the game. And I thought, and I was going to cover it because I, I was thinking this is going to be a long term thing, or I mean, if this was China, they would just come. China would just come up with its very own Daisy, like they did, like they actually fucking did. Um, they're not actually in the game, just in the files. Oh, that, Harmar, I didn't even know that. I didn't play Daisy in since like 2011 or something. So wow, uh, it was in a test build, not even usable yet. GG. Uh, so they removed it from the game files, and then uh, and then it's been reapproved already. So it actually ended up being not a thing. They're so freaking harsh with their game bands, yeah. But. Remember when I said that it's an eventuality that we will worldwide have games that are basically made that fit everybody's censorship guidelines. Uh, the biggest one we talk about the most is China because China has so many rules and different things that they, they, they will not allow their people to uh, be exposed to like Tiananmen Square and Winnie the Pooh. Um, but they, uh, uh, but they're very strict with video games, and so because it's such a huge market, they have actually uh, developers will uh, will either just not release on uh, in China, which is typically what they don't do because they want to be in, they want to have a market in China and take advantage of that massive player base. Um, but they have to make a separate client for it, or the cheaper option is to just make a game that works for China and for the U.S which pretty much translates into we're censoring the game for, I'm sorry, it's not U.S., say everybody, not just U.S., uh, but it pretty much translates into we're going to censor the game for everyone so that way we abide by uh, China's policies. And it fucking sucks. It fucking sucks. Now, this, that's what, when I saw this article come up, I was like, damn, Australia too? Like, I knew Australia was strict, but I didn't know that they were, like, that strict. Uh, they banned something else, I think, earlier this year. And it could be, didn't they ban like all video games <laughs> or something? They had like some crazy thing happen earlier this year. But, um, but man, it's just, it's, it, do, it definitely feels like the eventuality is all of us living in, you know, I don't know what you would call it, in a modern day f free internet. Uh, we will eventually be living by the same rules that, well, in, in a sense, right? Um, that people in China are living under. The veil, the veil of freedom, which already exists. It's just a veil. Uh, but yeah, it does. If, if fe I feel, I feel very like uh, a conspiracy theorist tinfoil hat when I say this stuff. But I feel like we've seen enough. We have seen enough uh, censorship stuff. Like, I mean, I, I didn't even talk. I wasn't even going to talk about the uh, the international. Uh, the international, though, they they've actually. Um, I guess their moderators were very specific and very strict with like what can be um mentioned in their chat for the live stream uh and you know with what's going on with hong kong and i'm not gonna talk about it here uh but uh you know i kind of felt i kind of felt dirty that you know people were like really like oh the international and shanghai and all this stuff it's like really it's like <laughs> i almost feel like it's almost like saying yay north korea is awesome like it, it feels the fucking same to me just one has has a little bit more freedom um as for my Korean games, is most don't give a shit about censorship, as we've seen with their live streams as well. Seems to carry over there. Uh, just stop trading with the communists. Well, that's the problem: is that they pretty much own everything. It's very difficult to do. Uh, and then when you do, when you do try to to limit or mitigate trade with uh, with a country as big as uh, as uh, as China, it, there's there's usually it usually 
uh, bites back. Uh, they already caused Maverick's jacket and Top Gun 2 to be changed for the sequel coming out because it had Taiwan flag on it in the original. So it would be okay to play in China. See? Yeah, there's, there's so many things that they just, that, that, that we have to do in order to make our Chinese overlords happy. Uh, because it's cheaper to do that than it is to make, you know, two different versions of things. One for the China mar Chinese, Chinese market, one for the everywhere else in the world markets. Um, if they start using the least common denominator for all regions, it would suck. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll hail our Chinese overlords. China owns a large amount of U.S. property. Oh, yeah, no, they do. They totally do. And, I mean, just to be clear, and I know it is, but I just want to say it anyways, I have absolutely nothing against China or Chinese folks. Uh, I fully support Hong Kong uh, in the best way that I possibly can from across the water uh, as a person in California, which is not a whole lot I could do other than, I don't know, retweet something. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it definitely feels like we're going down that censorship route and we're going to get there very quickly. We're pretty much all of our games are going to be uh, neutered because somebody, because some government somewhere is not going to allow their people to, uh, to, to be exposed to this kind of thing. Uh, uh, let's see. Speaking of China, speaking of China, they're getting their own steam. See, <laughs> Val Valve knows. Valve knows that there is no fucking way, no fucking way that they're going to be able to get their market uh, working in China in its current state. There is no way, and so Valve has decided to go ahead and make a separate uh, uh, platform or a separate uh, client called uh, Shengxi Pingtai, which translates directly into Steam Platform. Uh, so there's no, there's no convolute in any of this. Steam Platform. Uh, and we don't know what games it's going to be. Uh, is this Chinese just Steam called Smog? <laughs> ha! Uh, uh, we don't know what game is going to be launched with it, but it does say that the, uh, the first round of games launched on the platform will be comprised of around 40 tiles titles currently available in the international marketplace and includes some of Valve's own heavy hitters such as Dota 2 and Dota Underlords. Um, it's definitely going to be a big market. I'm glad that Steam is making, that Valve is making a separate, uh, a separate platform for it. I hope that Valve continues to be profitable enough in order to maintain the two different distribution platforms. Because, like I said before, uh, and as you guys will see, uh, the Chinese market is huge, like money wise. Uh, if it comes down to like, let's say that Shengxi Ping Tai takes off and it's the next big, you know, steam for China uh, and they start raking in tons and tons of cash, it's it might come down to big bank, take little bank in the end. And uh, guess who's a little bank? <laughs> it's everybody else. Um, I thought they were going to get Steam on the ropes with that Fortnite money, but Steam had the Chinese market in their back pocket. That's right. They're going to make a shitload of money off that. Uh, Chinese Steam store page will probably not even display certain games if your rating with the government is too low. Oh, yeah, there's also that too, huh? I don't actually know, I don't actually know how much of that is actually instituted in terms of like that, that uh, personal credit score thing. Uh, if you don't know what it is, there was a Black Mirror episode that talked about it. You basically got a social score where certain uh, a certain social st uh, status would allow you access to certain things like in real life you know like you'd actually get certain perks and benefits and then when you when your social status falls below a certain point then you actually lose what would normally just be something that everybody would have everybody would have everybody would have access to uh but um i don't know how much of that is implemented in china but i did read that uh, some of, that they were working on something like that like four years ago uh big bank take a little bank just gave me army deployment <laughs> flashbacks uh they gave by living and worship the government uh it makes you wonder what your social status would be it does that actually does make you wonder it makes me wonder what my uh social status would be i could tell you right now probably not very well with everything we're talking about here but let's move on let's move on from china um and talk a little bit about what time is it okay all right we're gonna wrap this up we're gonna wrap this up we got to talk a little bit about the next big thing to come out of 2021, probably. I wish I had like a sound. I need like a sound or something. There we go. I got a quick one. That's right. Matrix 4 is officially coming back. 
We are getting uh, Keanu Reeves. We're getting Carrie Ann Moss. Uh, we're getting, uh, I think, just Lana Wachowski, right? Um, and we don't, we don't actually know anything about the story. Uh, we don't really know uh, anything else. We don't, as of right now, Lawrence Fishburne is not on board, who played Morpheus. Um, and also, we're all fairly certain that Trinity and Neo are dead. So how they're going to be cast, I don't know. How they're, I don't know what their character is going to be doing. I have absolutely no idea. Um, or it picks up after the first movie, rewrite the canon. Oh, no, 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 no. I, don't, I, I, I feel like, as a whole, the Matrix trilogy is great, story-wise. I think as a whole, it's great. There's just a lot of, there's a lot of just bumpiness in the middle. Specifically, the middle. <laughs> like the, the middle, the middle, you know what I'm saying? Um... But yeah, I, I am I am very interested in seeing what they what they end up uh, uh, working on here and what they end up coming up with. Uh, just do more John Wick, yeah, totally. Just I mean, like we already know that. Uh, why is this thing blinking all over the place? Uh, we already know that uh, that Keanu Reeves is fully capable of still being an action star twenty, thirty years, you know, uh, later uh, from the uh, first Matrix series, which came first Matrix was released in the late nineties, uh, if I recall right, ninety nine or something like that. Uh, but we already know that Keanu Reeves is more than capable of uh, of still being an action star. Uh, I'm not quite sure exactly. I haven't really kept up with Carrie Ann Moss. But here's the thing, though. I don't know if it's going to be... Um, if we're really going to get a lot of action from the Neo character or from the the, uh, the Trinity character again. Because because they're dead. <laughs> like they're, they, I'm not to spoil it for you, but like specifically, we, we're all fairly certain that Neo is dead. Dead. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm very curious what, uh, w how they decide to bring these characters on. Uh, and at the same time, personally, I am all for more Matrix. I think the Matrix universe is so fucking cool. And there are so many things that like, that they touched on in the first, in, well, uh, in the, in the, the first trilogy, I guess, uh, that they didn't really expand upon so you still are kind of like not really sure how things happen or you you there's lots of like theory videos and whatnot that try to explain it but for the most part they're just theories um so yeah i, I would absolutely love to see more they'd be great series on hbo you're right yeah ditch is totally right it would make a great series on hbo uh yeah please give me more uh give me game of thrones matrix edition um or uh that uh more animatrix uh so that's an that's an amazing series i mean they had that animated uh series that netflix did that was a bunch of like short stories or whatever that's basically what the animatrix is by the way if you've not if you've not seen animatrix i highly recommend going through and watching it i'm pretty sure neo neo did die after his fight with agent smith please because remember neo allowed smith to assimilate him uh which allowed the machine baby dude to eliminate the program through neo's body in the machine city yep so he's dead um netflix I don't know who would do a better job. I feel like HBO would because Netflix typically doesn't go past the second season. So HBO, I feel like we could probably get at least three seasons out of them. Um, first, the <laughs> first, thing, the architect. Oh my god, visa v, ergo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the architect. That was that was an interesting uh, character and all that. Jesus, they can't they can't totally retcon a lot of stuff. But I don't. I I, I would prefer that they didn't retcon a lot of things. Typically, specifically because I feel like uh, the first, the, again, the first three movies, uh, it's, a, it's a great story. And I don't want them to, like, change any of that. Um, with the get down. Oh, I didn't even watch that. Did they let it go? Um, Matrix 4, Architect Reloaded. No, it should be Matrix, Matrix 4 uh, or Matrix uh, uh, Resurrection. That's what it should be because it was a Matrix uh, Reloaded. Matrix, uh, yeah, or re yeah, or reincarnation, like something like that. Um, God, if it was reincarnation, that would just totally just give away exactly how we get Trinity and Neo back. <laughs> Can we please that? There'd be there'd be no nothing. Yeah, okay, well, I guess they're coming back. Um, Matrix reanimated, Matrix resurrection, Matrix res restarted. Yeah, at least it's not rebooted. Yeah, Matrix retcon. There we go. Matrix retcon. Oh, what are you guys doing? Don't fight! They're, they're fighting already. 
Sunday. Sunday just <laughs> Matrix re exactly. Uh, so yeah, Matrix Four is happening. Other news related to TV movies. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw, but Spider Man. There's a there's an issue with Spider Man. Uh, so Sony and Disney apparently cannot do that. Um, and because they can't do that, they uh, are going to be going their separate ways. And Sony is going to continue the Spider-Man series. Two more movies planned, by the way. It is very likely that if they don't work something out, then... Um, here's the article here. Let's go into this little right here. If they don't manage to work something out, then it's likely that they're not even going to be able to use other characters from the MCU, which is going to be weird. Uh, and yeah, like, yeah, like Bo says, it's not a done deal. Like I said, if they don't work things out, then, uh, then yeah, it's, uh, there would be a very interesting split. It is pretty much like one of the better characters as of late. I, I've only seen, I haven't seen uh, Far From Home, right? Yeah, I haven't seen Far From Home. Uh, but, but seeing Tom Holland play Spider-Man in everything else that he's appeared in, in the, you know, like what the phase, the previous phase of the MCU, uh, he is definitely the best Spider-Man, like for sure, uh, the best Spider-Man. So, uh, for this to happen where they're going to like, <laughs> where they're going to potentially pull him away from everything, like that's, uh, <sighs> That's going to be rough. Uh, Jake Hall kills it. Yeah, I really, I know, I really want to see the new one. I just haven't, I, 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 I want to see it, but at the same time, I want my son to see it. But my son hasn't seen all the movies, and he's really into Iron Man right now. Like, that's the, the last movie he saw was Iron Man, the Iron Man series. And so I, I don't feel like going right from, hey, Iron Man's awesome, to... <laughs> so, so, yeah, we gotta, I gotta, I gotta work it through the series first, you know, before I... Before I do the thing, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, anyways, uh, this is something that's new and developing. Sony has uh, put out a tweet where they, uh, they're they trying to, like, kind of, they're trying to push blame back on Disney. Disney knows that it has rabid fans, so when they say, hey, we can't make a deal with Sony, go get them! Like, that's what's happening. Look at look at the Sony tweet. The Sony tweet that has, uh, um... There's a bunch of garbage ass memes, memes that I don't trust, so I'm not gonna pull it up. Uh, but uh, but yeah, even on, I, even on Sony's tweet where they're talking about how how you know we're trying to make this work, but Sony this right? They're trying to basically push the blame back or at least make it sound neutral. Um, you know, they're getting shit on, and, and Disney knows. Like they're trying to basically muscle their way around. All of this is is basically just a slap fight. They'll eventually figure out something and make something work because by them splitting up, they both will lose money. Uh, so. It would make more sense for them to work together. But you know, you know how shitty dev studios can be. Look at, uh, look at, um, Superman's CG, CG mustache removal. Like, that is the best, that is the best example of, uh, of st studios being just shitty with each other. Uh, and so, yeah, it's entirely possible that, uh, that, you know, they could just, no, I'm not gonna do it. And they get fucking super stubborn and just never happens. Uh, it's kind of messed up. As much as I like Disney Marvel movies and Holland Spider-Man, Disney is being the bully here, not Sony. Yeah, I do feel like Disney is being the bully here. They make so much money elsewhere, they could just allow, they could just take a hit and still make a profit. Uh, but whatever. Um, studios being petty. I know, I know. If Disney really wanted to muscle it, they probably could afford to just buy it out from them. Well, maybe that's something that Sony wants, but the num the, but the price is just prob is probably just outlandish. And honestly depending on how long they own the license for, which might be in perpetuity, I don't actually know, um, it might be worth it for them to keep it forever. Who really cares if Disney is being the bully? Disney Spider-Man movies are 100% better. Well, it's Disney Spider-Man movies, but it's Disney's Sony Spider-Man movies. So, it's still, <laughs> like, it's still Sony. Uh, it's just, to be part of the MCU, they had to strike a deal uh, where, what was it? They were getting like 5%. I mean, we don't know all the details, but what I read was like Disney was getting 5% of the profits from, uh, the Spider-Man standalone movies. Uh, and then there was like a price for having characters in the MCU appear in the movies. So honestly, I think that this shit is just gonna like, just go away. 
I think it's just going to go away. Um, if they can't, if Disney can't just buy it outright, they're not going to just buy, they're not going to just buy Sony. Uh, I want to say that there are some antitrust laws, some monopolies, you know, there's some laws there that'll probably stop that from happening. But at the same time, I don't really think that they, it will, but that's probably what they're worried about. Uh, to be honest, spider movies have been good with just Sony. They've been freaking amazing with Disney. It's still, it's still, hi Sunday. Why wow, all the pets today, huh? Uh, but it's still technically, it's still technically Sony's, uh, uh, Spider-Man. And that's the thing. That's the thing. Disney bought Fox. They did buy Fox. They bought it. They bought not in the entirety of Fox. They bought uh, a certain wing of Fox. Uh, so I don't know exactly what that was. Uh, last thing I read was Sony was, uh, is Sony's going to do everything they can to cling to the IP because it has floated the studio for years as a lifeline for them. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Venom only did good because of international and because they didn't have any, uh, any competition. Remember when Venom came out, there was like nothing else out. Uh, so they, they are profitable in that respect. Um, because, you know, because, because of their, their timing and everything was, was impeccable. Uh, the movie itself obviously did not, was not particularly good. Uh, the right wing of Fox. Regarding itself with a number of production houses in the film market, would have to define what the American the American market is to determine if a monopoly is present. Yep. Venom did well because we all thought it would be good. Yeah, that's the other thing too. Yeah. Although I think a lot of people knew that it was going to be potentially garbage because of the the previews. It just kind of seemed weird, kind of seemed flat. But um, God, I, I kind of want to watch it just for the graphics. Honestly, like it just looks fucking good. Venom is still part of the Spider Man IP. Mm hmm. Almost all of Fox, except for sports affiliates and the news networks, which is a huge chunk of Fox. I don't want to say, yeah, you know, when you say almost all, except for this, uh, we should note that those are very, very big wings, right wings of <laughs> Fox. But, but yeah, no, it's, they're, they're different. They're different businesses too. Um, the ending of Venom, Venom was fantastic. I like Venom was super fun. See, I'll probably watch it. Uh, did you share your kid into this into the Spider Verse? Not yet. Uh, we almost started it, but we didn't get into it yet. Uh, so let's move on. We got to cover up. We got to wrap up this news. I think we're done. Where are we at right now? Oh, perfect. Jeez, jeez. Okay, what's left? Wow, Classic launches next week. All right, Monday. Monday, Wow, Classic launches uh, for most folks. And I believe probably midnight uh, for European East, right? Uh, so look forward to probably lots of World of Warcraft streams across the board. Uh, we do have a guild. It is called Legendary. Uh, Guns is managing it. We do have a dedicated channel that uh, uh, in our Discord that is public. So if you want to get down with this community in playing World of Warcraft, and maybe you have no interest in any other parts of, of this community, any of the games I play or whatever, but you like the people, uh, feel free, you can hop in. That channel and those related voice channels are open. It is on my Discord. Uh, I think actually you go to discord.gg slash aka Mike B. That might take you there. Or you can just, oh yeah, discord.gg slash aka Mike B. And you could go and you could sign up and you should be able to see the, uh, the wow general and all of the, uh, world of Warcraft related, uh, voice channels. So yeah. And Brocraft is for my, I don't think they see that. I don't think they see Brocraft. Uh, they should only be able to see just a handful of channels, but that's where all the action is going to be. So that's all the action is going to be. So, so tune in next week. We plan some world of Warcraft right here. Thank you so much for watching chat. I'm actually going to leave you guys, I think, whenever we close this out. Maybe. Now we'll come back for a second. Uh, are we going to do a naked gnome run and crash the server again? We don't have to do that in order to crash the server. The world is going to crash the server. <laughs> like it's gonna, this shit's going to be a mess. It's going to be a mess. Uh, how's the album going? Slowly. Very slowly. Um, all right. So that's it. Thank you so much, guys. I answered the question, Mike Darling. We'll talk later. Thank you so much for watching. See you later. Bye.